Suzanne Mitchell, the director, producer. Did? No, I don't. Just one of the horses. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Steve Poltz. I did the soundtrack. This guy right here. He's lived a very, very rich, incredible life, and it was a story about how each one of us can make a difference to save this planet and the creatures that inhabit this planet. And his message was so loud and clear, and it was something that he has been doing his entire life that it deserved a feature-length film, because there are so many nuances about his life. He's a writer. He's a poet. He's a photographer who photographed for Life magazine. Um, he's an animal advocate, wild, wildlife advocate an advocate for the land and preserving the land. And in his 60s, he started a wild horse sanctuary called the Black Hills Wild Horse Sanctuary, where now 500 wild Mustangs run free. So it was a pretty incredible uh, story. And even today, in his 80s, he continues to fight for the land and for the people and the indigenous creatures by trying to stave off a uranium mining company right now that's trying to mine for uranium and uh, if they were successful, it could pollute the water that the, that the animals drink from and that the people drink from, the aquifer. So at, at 88 years old, he's still going strong and he's still fighting the good fight for all of us. As far as making the soundtrack goes, I was watching clips of the film and then Suzanne said, you really need to go out and meet Dayton. So I was lucky enough to fly out and he gave me a personal tour in his car around uh, 13,000 acres and. Uh, I got to feel the uh, horses come by. They know who Dayton is, and uh, I got to feel the energy of the whole place, and it really made me want to compose beautiful music. The cool thing about being with Dayton is you meet a lot of girls. Because <laughs> <laughs> girls love him. <laughs> we call him the horse whisperer and him the music whisperer, and everywhere we go, there are women flocking. It's <laughs> that was too old last uh, spring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there are major news issues right now in the press about wild horses in America. Slaughtered plants that might open, um, more confinement, more entrapments by the BLM. You know, Dayton's story, while that is uh, what he has created, the Black Hills Wild Horse Sanctuary, is the solution to all of these major news stories about wild horses, he still continues to be an advocate for the land, and that's a really important part of all of this. Dayton, yeah, Dayton was went to Pierre, South Dakota, the capital of South Dakota, to speak in front of the legislature just a few weeks ago to beg them to reconsider um, looking more stringently at these miners who want to come in and, and apply for permits. And that received national attention. An AP um, reporter picked up the story and it went everywhere. He was on the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle. So, you know, because it was a, there was a very valid news story there. We're hoping that the film will continue that message because we touch on the uranium issue in the film. Well, <laughs> we need a public outroar is the only thing that will save those aquifers. This is a Canadian company that's never mined uranium before, and the history of uranium mining is to put down a small deposit for cleanup, mine the uranium, get out and let the public pay the millions of dollars to clean up the mess. and. Uh, this outfit is, is, is pretty shady, and it's, it's a Canadian outfit with Belgian money behind it. The uranium will go to India and China, and may come back to us one day to haunt us. And this is a dry country, and the only water we can get it for 500 head of horses is from four wells, all from the same aquifer that they're going to mine. I don't get how people can think that we can allow companies to come in, make a lot of money, under the guise that we're going to create an economic base for the region where we're mining, but not see the bigger picture. Look what happened in the Gulf Coast with the BP oil spill. You know, one little mess up because you're cutting corners and you've destroyed a lot of wildlife and a lot of natural resources. And we can't let that happen. Dayton can't let that happen. So he's, he's, he has this very serious side of protecting the land, mm -hmm. right, and the animals. But then he was also a rodeo clown, a Life magazine photographer, and an award-winning writer. But the rodeo clown part is also, you know, mentioned and shown in the film. We found archival footage of Dayton back in the days when he was wearing, you know, the, the entire um, 
matador suit, I guess is what you would call that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you call it, help me. Oh, that's close enough. And uh, with his cape, and he went to the University of Berkeley, he studied English there. I mean, he has such a rich past mm -hmm. and such an inspiring presence that we really hope everybody will get a chance to see this one. One of the best parts of the film for me is uh, there's a scene with Dayton where he's given a Native American name by the Lakota Indian tribe, mm -hmm. and his name is uh, in English is translated to protector of ceremonies and it's a beautiful scene where they're uh, tying dream catchers to his hair uh, it's it's just it's gorgeous and there's a uh, one of his best friends is a an Indian chief I think he is mm -hmm. and his name I only know it as his English name is Tom Cook but he's a I can't say what his name is but it's, it's a beautiful scene it's just a testament to what he's done that these people are having Sundance ceremonies on his land we invited him in because that land that we've saved through the horses has uh, flint mines that are 12 to 14,000 years old. It's full of sacred sites, old battlefields, and and uh, we have it set up now. We're a nonprofit set up, so it can never be built on, and it's going to be the last wild place in time because even the national parks and forests are so crowded now that. Uh, you just can't govern them for wildlife if they're that many people.